million seabirds and a hundred. Oh, yay. Okay, we're recording now. <laughs> um, marine mammals are being killed by plastic and more plastic than fish in our oceans. Um, and, you know, our top 10, so the International Coastal Cleanup is something the Ocean Conservancy has been doing for about 25 years. And so you can see on that top 10 list, 4 million food wrappers, this is worldwide. Um, the most important take home from this thing, first of all, is these are huge numbers. These are numbers that you need to keep in the back of your mind, but numbers that you have to understand that you are, as an individual, highly unlikely, un, you know, going to be able to change, but we can all be a part of this and a part of this kind of groundswell that we're experiencing right now by gathering information. And I love Karen's thing, just come up with three things that you can do to change. So looking really quickly at this international coastal cleanup list, um, food wrappers, cigarette butts, this is the first year um, since the coastal cleanup that food wrappers has outnumbered cigarette butts. Cigarette butts have always been number one. Um, then we have plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, straws, plastic cups, plastic grocery bags, plastic takeout, um, other bags, and plastic lids. So other than cigarette butts, what do all of these items have in common? They are based on food and drink consumption. So when you're thinking of those three things, when you think about what you eat and what you drink and what vessel you are using for eating and drinking, um, and, and these are some of the things that you can change, and I am here to give you some hopefully fairly easy tips um, you know, it's, it's, again, very overwhelming. And again, Karen said, my slides don't want to advance here, sorry. Um, if we can't all be perfect, but if all of us can do a few things to work towards this problem, that's what's most important. Okay, there we go. So I think if you're on this, this call, it's very likely you're already using reusable shopping bags, but the most common comment that I hear um, when I'm at an event or selling reusable shopping bags is, oh, I have so many bags and they're all in the trunk of my car or they're all hanging on the door, but I never remember to bring them into the store. So this is, I'm going to tell you this right now, this is one of the things you can do to help yourself remember. Next time you forget your bags and you go to the grocery store and all your stuff is in the shopping cart, you put it on the, the little conveyor belt, you check out and you put everything back in the shopping cart without bags, no bags at all. When you have to go back to your car and lift one item at a time and put it in the back of your car and then you have to go home and either carry everything in in your arms or you have to bag it in the back of your car, especially when it's a day like today and it's 95 degrees outside, you will remember your bags next time. Okay, so that's the way I remember um, was a couple of times I forgot my bags and I just threw everything back in the cart and put it in my car like that and you will not forget again. Um, <laughs> I don't have any slides about plastic bottles or plastic straws because I think those are two, like the plastic grocery bags, those are the, the three kind of top low hanging fruit items. We had this huge straw movement um, a few years ago. I was selling like crazy numbers of straws and it was so great to see. And now when people come and buy straws, I ask them if they have a cleaning brush. Oh, I've already got one. So now your next step with straws, if you're already using a reusable straws, again, remember to take it with you. Don't forget when you sit down at the restaurant and you order your food to say no straw, please. You got about a 60, 70% chance that you're not gonna get a straw. Um, but at least you tried, you did your due diligence. <laughs> so if I have my reusable straw, I still take out the plastic one just to make my point and put in my reusable straw in my drink. Um, the one thing to remember about plastic bottles is that um, when you're, well, maybe not right now because gas is really expensive, but when you're buying a plastic bottle of water, you are paying more uh, per gallon of water than you are paying for gasoline. So it's $3 for a gallon of water. It's 2 to $3 for a bottle of what a half a liter bottle of water. Um, so if that doesn't hurt your wallet um, it, or make your brain hurt, start thinking about it that way. Um, you know, your tap water is basically free. You can get a filter. Everyone should have one of these, something like this. And they're easy to find. I don't even sell them anymore because you can buy them anywhere reusable bottle. Most of the time, if you go to a trade show or something like that, you're going to get a free one. You probably have one laying around your house. There you go. Yep. Okay. So those are the top three low hanging fruits. Um, 
So single use plastic wrap, who gets irritated by plastic wrap? It's always sticking it to itself and it's just annoying and you can only use it one time. There's a ton of alternatives out there now um, that you can use instead of plastic wrap. My favorite is the bees wrap. It's a reusable, washable sheet of cotton with it's um, embedded with beeswax um, or they're making vegan um, food wrap now with a plant-based wax. So even if you're a vegan, you can still find an alternative. Um, there's also these great silicone covers. You can use those to cover a bowl, cover a can, um, you know, get rid of that plastic wrap. If you have plastic wrap and you need to use it up, remember plastic wrap can be recycled with your, with your plastic film recycling. So if you are already currently taking plastic bags back to the grocery store, um, you can throw that plastic wrap in there with it. Um, and then these really cute bowl covers um, that I have, um, they're like a drawstring bowl cover so you can cover your bowl. So there's a ton of alternatives, honestly. So I, want, I wanted to mention this in the beginning, like there's a lot of things you probably already have in your house. Like I own this business, so obviously I would love for you to come and buy it from me. But the point is to reduce and reuse and, and you know look around your house and find things that you already have. I bet you some of you have family members that will take an old newspaper and a rubber band to cover bowl. You know, like there's things out there that you can use that aren't going to create more waste. Now, if you don't have a tool to use, then you come see me. <laughs> um, lots and lots of people forget about the produce bags. So you've got all your reusable bags and you're doing a great job. And then you go to the produce section and you're putting everything in plastic bags anyway. So stop that. Again, you'll have to pick out three things according to Karen. So you can pick out your three favorite things right now. <laughs> Grab your plastic or your reusable produce bags um, and go to the grocery store. Now, a lot of the grocery stores are already like pre-wrapping vegetables and fruits. Like I will never understand why someone would wrap a single potato in, a, in plastic um, shrink wrap. It makes zero sense to me. So. If you're irritated by that, you are making decisions with your dollars. Don't buy them. Go to your local farmer's market. Go to your local farm stand. Those guys don't have time to put plastic wrap on their fruits and vegetables. They're just throwing it in a basket and it's right there for you. Um, and I'll never understand. <laughs> you don't need to put bananas and things like that. I know some people don't want stuff touching their carts, especially right now. But the banana, you're going to peel. The avocado, you're going to peel. Um, so it's got its own wrapper around it. So you don't need that. There's lots of alternatives. Honestly, produce bags and, and grocery shopping bags, you can go on YouTube and find out how you can make your own reusable shopping bag out of a t-shirt. You don't have to have any skills. You just need to have a pair of scissors and a t-shirt and you can make your own bags. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you come see me. <laughs> um, all right, waste-free lunch options. There's tons of options out there. Um, anything from a Tupperware container that you already have in your, the, your cabinet. Um, the top left picture, I was at the King's Grant Farmer's Market a couple weeks ago and the, the vegan food truck was there. So I had to try a Coney Island dog. I didn't have my own container with me, but I had my own utensils with me. So, you know, it was, it was minimal waste. It was still some, I only buy from, you know, if it can come in a paper container. I refuse styrofoam. I refuse plastic containers. Um, and then, you know, your, there's lunch boxes out there. There's tons of options for lunch boxes, um, reusable snack and sandwich bags. I love the sandwich wraps picture there on the lower right hand side. Um, because when you open those up, you've got an automatic placemat. So your food is already touching something that you know where it's been. Um, and you can just use that as your own placemat. So there's tons of uh, waste free lunch options. Bring your own cup, bring your own bottle to fill up on your drinks. I think hopefully as COVID kind of moves out, we'll be able to request um, that people use our cups again um, instead of, I know right now nobody wants to touch a cup, but you can ask anyway, because they are, I have experienced in the last few weeks um, being at places where I asked them if they can refill my personal cup and they've done it. So um, let's see what else do I have here. To go boxes. This is the one that I always see the light bulbs going off because generally we don't think about this. Um, bring your own container when you go out to eat for your leftovers. You can grab something out of your cabinet, like an old, I don't care if it's plastic or glass or whatever it is, you just throw a couple of those things in a bag. 
and you take it out to eat. We have a foam ban coming up. We've got a lot of small, um, especially small restaurants right now that are, are faced with having to find those um, compostable alternatives to styrofoam, which are you know pretty significantly more expensive. Some of them will start charging us for those containers, um, which I respect. And I think they should be doing that anyway if they wanna use a high quality compostable container. Um, but let's say do us all a favor, you save them money, you know where your container's been, just bring your own container. When you're done eating, um, you just throw it in your own, your own box to go box and you take it home with you. Um, we, I was on vacation last week and visiting my dad and we had a whole big bag full of containers when we went out to eat and the waitress was totally thrown off by watching us what we were shoveling the leftovers into our boxes. It's, it's, you'll get a lot of great feedback and, and by you doing this, especially in a public place like a restaurant, you are going to inspire others. Um, they be, oh, I never thought about that. Bring your own container. Uh, let's see. Plastic free alternatives. So now we're switching gears a little bit. So these are these are items that would generally come in a plastic container. Um, someone mentioned earlier, shampoo, body wash, things like that. So there, there are more and more alternatives. I've been in this business for more than 13 years now. More and more alternatives coming out to some of those items that previously were only available in, in plastic containers. So shampoo, deodorant, conditioner, um, soaps. Again, go to your local farmer's market, your local craft show. You can find soaps. A lot of the um, you know, soap makers are either just using a small band of paper or nothing at all. Um, See, so yeah, that's lotion on the bottom left, um, the solid deodorant, the deodorants that come in those, that top right um, circle like that, you can actually melt them down and put them in an old deodorant container. So you can pretend like you're still doing what you used to do. You're just being more eco-friendly about it. You're using and reducing. Um, and same again with household cleaner kind of stuff. Um, the laundry detergent that comes in a paper box and it comes in strips has been like, this miraculous discoveries to so many people because you don't have to buy any more of those big giant bulky plastic containers. You don't have to do any more measuring. You're going to save like so much space in your laundry room that you're going to have to find something else to put in there that's, you know, fun and uh, decorative maybe. <laughs> um, the wool dryer balls, they take the place of dryer sheets, which are plastic and who knows what kind of chemicals they have in them to make them smell the way they smell. The dish block, um, even um, buying things that you're going to use to wash yourself or wash your dishes or whatever, you can find plant-based materials. The loofah, um, that brush picture down there on the bottom, that's wood and agave fiber. So there's tons and tons of alternatives out there that are plastic free. Um, you clean up on the top left, that's a toilet bowl cleaner. So you, uh, she's local, you drop one of those things in the toilet bowl and it goes all fizzy fizzy and then you wash your toilet bowl and, and you didn't have to use any chemicals and you didn't have to use a plastic bottle. Um, someone mentioned in the chat room, the uh, less than store, there's three locations. It's got tons and tons of refill stuff. Whole Foods, um, I think Kroger's, there's lots and lots of stores, heritage store um, popping up. I think the one, the coffee on the top left was from the fresh market. Um, you know, bring your own container, bring your own jar, bring your own bags, your bulk bags, cotton bags, whatever. Um, and and refill 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 there's uh lots of you know more and more options opening up um for this type of shopping um you know just remember to weigh your container before you fill it or you're gonna have to pay for your container <laughs> let's see um one of the things that i do with my business is i offer custom printed eco-friendly products so the reason i wanted to put in the slide is because it's not just for businesses or nonprofits also think about if you're doing um, wedding favors or party favors or something like that look for that reusable that alternative that item that it doesn't even have to be like a reusable bag or something like that but something that's going to stick around for a while that people are actually going to use um, and then request from your supplier that whatever you're getting is not wrapped in plastic when you purchase it because a lot of these promotional items, when you get them, they will be individually wrapped in plastic because they don't want them to scratch. So, um, you know, make sure that um, whatever you get it, whatever you get and whoever you get it from, 
discuss the eco-friendly alternatives, the options for buying these types of products. It, it comes down to packaging, and that's with anything that you buy with shipping. I know sometimes it's hard, but think everything, you open up a box and there are items like this big, and you've got this gigantic box full of foam peanuts or something like that. Talk to your, uh, your person about that and ask them not to do that again if you're gonna order from them again. Okay, uh, whew, that was a lot, sorry. I talked fast, I'm, um, hopefully you got three items, maybe more out of that. Again, I am an eco store. I'm, this is my brand new eco mobile truck. Um, you're gonna sneak peek here. Um, the back of this truck is gonna be run on solar, so it's gonna be full of eco-friendly alternatives and it's also gonna be running on solar panels so powered by the sun, so I'm really excited. And I will be at the Norfolk Botanical Garden next Wednesday hopefully being powered by solar. <laughs> oh, we're, get, we're, we're waiting for a couple of parts to come in, but hopefully, and then um, Wednesday at Town Center also, Why Not Wednesday um, for their first Why Not Wednesdays. And, um, you know, I'm obviously going to toot my own horn and promote my own business, but there's a lot of businesses, small businesses in our area. Not only do you have to not worry about shipping things, but you're supporting local families. And a lot of these um, businesses are making things from recycled materials. They're making things from eco-friendly um, ingredients and you know, your makers and your bakers and your, your farmers, um, they're all really doing a lot of good things. So they're worth supporting. And that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you so much for the wonderful program. Um, so before I dive into the Q&A portion of this, um, there's just a few things that I wanted to kind of recap. Uh, for those of us that uh, joined a little late, I just wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor, Steel, for the free programs. Uh, bring this back up again because we have a whole lineup of uh, programming that supports Wash the Short and complements it like this one this evening. Um, tomorrow, for instance, we have uh, Climate Change, the 757's Wicked Problem with ODU Professor uh, Dr. Michael Allen. Um, and then uh, in addition to that uh, resource on our webpage, I'm actually going to email our participants um, a list of the resources you guys have been putting in the chat tonight. There's been a lot of great links shared, so I just kind of compiled that so I can send it to everyone directly who registered. So uh, we'll include that and some information about our upcoming free programs as well. Uh, also including a reminder about uh, Christina's pop-up here on July 21st, because again, we've got a great market uh, with um, some other vendors out there as well. Like she had said, um, if you can support local produce stands, we've got a great one. I'd mentioned earlier it's actually a former staff member here from the garden who started fritillary farm so you can uh, come get some great reusable products from uh, ecomaniac and put them get some new produce put it directly in those reusable bags things like that too so again um, I'll put reminders about that in the follow-up email for you guys and thank you for bearing with us on the uh, recording issue so we do have a portion of the program recorded uh, after I was able to trouble uh, shoot that through zoom um, but in addition to that, I just wanted to give a quick shout out. Um, when it comes to the changes, uh, we're really excited here at the Garden to kind of give a platform to these great organizations tonight. Um, and we're trying to uh, follow their lead and also um, other nonprofits in the area. We've actually been doing some great work here at the Garden. Uh, we completely eliminated single use plastic use on campus. So our weddings team and events team have done a great job. Uh, all our events like that uh, require um, compostable reusable items. So um, in addition to that, we're not selling uh, bottled sodas, things like that too. So, you know, we're making some changes too, and we're glad that you guys are out there making those changes with us. Uh, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and get into some of this Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them into the chat, and I will read them out loud to our wonderful panelists tonight. So um, with that, the first one here, um, just kind of, I know we talked on it a little bit, but uh, I think this one will be more towards um, Jim's presentation, but we can kind of recap here. Um, I've got, uh, if the seven cities are moving forward with the plastic bag feet and tax, um, and there's a coordinated effort by any local organizations to get that moving here. So I know we did talk on that earlier, but I think it'd be a good one, a very uh, timely one to recap and just drive that home. So uh, Jim, I think that one's more for you. I'll let, I'll let Karen pile on too. <clears throat> I know that uh, we have spoken with uh, uh, Virginia Beach City Council members uh, along the way over the last few uh, months, and we continue to interact with them. Um, 
about it. Um, they've got a lot going on Virginia Beach City Council right now. So this is not at the top of their list of things to do. I think other cities, I think uh, hats off to Roanoke for uh, actually putting an ordinance in place and pushing the uh, and pushing the state to get the tax guidelines in, uh, published. And um, Roanoke's moving out. And I believe that Loudoun County and I've I've heard of others, and I'm not going. I, I can't. I can't say all the names because we've recently, as we start to come out of the pandemic, more and more people are, we're waiting to see if somebody did it. And now that Roanoke's done it, uh, others are ex starting to express interest. I believe that. Uh, I believe that uh, Norfolk uh, is. Uh, is is hearing the drum roll and starting to get interested in it. So I'll turn it over to Karen if she's got something to add there. Um, sure, thank you, Jim. And thanks for this question. Um, you know, this legislation was passed over a year ago, but it was signed right before um, COVID hit all of us and changed <clears throat> our, our whole world um, and especially the world for retailers. So we, out of, out of respect for the kind of challenges that they were having at the time, we decided to wait a year to uh, look at, at um, working with the city councils to try to get this passed. Now, ideally, all of the cities in Hampton Roads would pass similar ordinances and, and they would all be enacted you know, simultaneously because mo many of us work, play, shop in several different cities. We don't just uh, stay in Virginia Beach or Norfolk or Chesapeake. We all travel back and forth among these cities. So our goal is really to get this to be a Hampton Roads um, uh, issue, a Hampton Roads step forward. And we uh, have a pretty active group of people um, who it's being led by the Norfolk Environmental Commission at this time, uh, a very active group of people in Norfolk who are really interested in seeing Norfolk um, move forward with this. So we've started conversations with the city council there and um, are, are working on a draft ordinance. We've also started, as Jim said, to talk with city council people in Virginia Beach. Um, but we're going to need everybody's support when these things start uh, to show up on agendas for city councils, we're going to need everybody speaking to uh, his or her representative to say that it's something you support because they're going to hear from others um, who don't support it or who are worried about what it means to to them as a retailer or how complicated this might be for them. Um, so they're going to hear from people who are concerned and we're going to, we really are going to need the help of people who support it. I think organizations that work in all the cities, um, like the League of Women Voters who have reached out to me to say that they're interested in this issue, they will play a really important part in this too because they have members in all the cities in Hampton Roads. So if we're gonna try to get something, um, to move something forward in all of the cities, we're gonna need everybody's help. And so watch for more information this fall. Um, I put in the chat that signing up for our newsletter is a good way to kind of stay in the loop. If you go to our lrnow.org website and um, go down to the bottom of the homepage, there's a place to sign up for our newsletter. And that, that's a, a way to kind of stay in the loop and, and uh, stay informed as things move forward so that you know when it's the right time to call your legislator and tell them you support this. Thank you. Yeah, I've, uh, I've included that link as well. Uh, so that'll go out to every participant that registered tonight so they can get on that uh, that newsletter there. Um, I do have a follow up. Uh, looks like just um, if there's any information on what um, on the litter tax. So uh, we have a question. They want to know if there's information on who would pay that. Um, and if there's an idea on how Virginia may use the collected money, if that's something that is um, being discussed at the moment. Jim, do you want to talk about the litter tax? Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, every <clears throat> businesses businesses pay the litter tax. Um, 
uh, $20 per business. Uh, if, and, um, and that's not much, right? Um, but it's, it's a start. It's, um, <clears throat> if it's, if the company is, is involved in manufacturing of products, it's $30 and that's an annual fee, which is, uh, which is not a lot. So, uh, and it really hasn't, it, it was, it was actually, if you look in the litter free Virginia, um, learn the facts, uh, thing that I dropped into the chat, it, it, it's, it's an exhaustive summary of, uh, how poorly Virginia has done in, in collecting the litter tax, updating the litter tax, keeping, keeping up with it over time, uh, keeping up with inflation. So what was done in 2020 uh, helped. It doubled the litter tax, but uh, frankly, there's a long way to go. Um, I think, and I'm not the expert on how the litter tax money is doled out by the state, but I think it's doled out to municipalities who use it to uh, uh, conduct uh, a plan for their recycling and their uh, litter collection. Thank you. And that one, let's see. Um, I do, you know, I appreciate all the great suggestions you guys have in the chat. It was a very active chat tonight, uh, which is always great to see um, everyone kind of brainstorming what they can do here. Um, let's see. Scrolling down, I do have someone, you know, talking about um, the ghost gear in fishing and uh, choosing more responsible um, choices. Uh, also, just, you know, we have Mark here. I wanted to shout out the Virginia Aquarium and their uh, sensible seafood program as well. Um, might not tie exactly into the plastics, but, you know, if someone uh, brought it up in the chats. Um, I definitely recommend you guys checking that out, their information page, uh, the sensible seafood program. Because, um, again, another... Um, sustainable choice that we can make as consumers here directly. Um, so scrolling through, looking for some more of the uh, uh, questions here. Um, you guys have got lots of kudos. Again, thank you so much uh, for participating. Let's see, we've got from Becky. Um, if anyone is willing to speak um, to the Chesapeake City Council about the plastic bag fee. Um, again, that's uh, from Becky. If uh, also, if anybody, this just makes me think, if you um, would like contact information or whatnot, I'm going to put my email in um, the chat and uh, I will be emailing you guys again with follow-up if you have specific questions. But uh, is there someone who's willing to speak to, uh, or do you guys actively speak to different city councils uh, just outside of Virginia Beach? I can jump in on that a little bit. Um, I, we work in Virginia Beach, and then I also work with the Norfolk Environmental Commission in Norfolk. Um, we don't do any work in Chesapeake, and I think it, it really should be a Chesapeake resident who goes to speak to the city council. But we would be happy to provide um, some background information and talking points, if that would be helpful. Thank you for that. Um, it looks like we have another question. Um, this one, uh, I guess, Norfolk oriented. Uh, so we have a um, participant that lives in Norfolk. And she says, I live in Norfolk and my large apartment complex does not offer recycling. Is this legal to not offer recycling? Um, she says she's been driving weekly to drop stuff off at a location on Lance Avenue. Thank you for making that effort. Um, so I guess that's the first part of the question, if that's legal for places to not offer that recycling option. Um, and, and I think in all of our cities, multifamily housing is not included in the um, municipal trash and recycling program. So it's up to the owner of the apartment complex or the residents, if it's a co-op or a condo, uh, to, to ask for recycling. I actually live in a multifamily um, building in, in Norfolk and um, we didn't have recycling when I first bought my place. And we switched out with the consensus of all the owners. We switched out half of our trash cans for recycling cans. And um, our recycling cans are always fuller than our trash cans are. And it didn't increase our cost at all because we paid for the number of cans we had. And so now half of them are recycling and half are trash, same cost and we're providing recycling. So it's up to the residents, I think, to really work with the company, the owner, or um, 
to, you know, if you're in a condo or a co-op to work with your fellow owners and residents and see what you can do. Thank you. Um, and then I just looked this up. Uh, so on the city of Norfolk's page, um, there is uh, the location you mentioned at Lance Road, and there's also another location at Pine Ridge Road uh, where you can drop off to. Um, but other than that, that looks like the uh, last of the questions. So if anybody has anything that comes to mind, I'll kind of hang out here for another um, minute or so and see, but it looks like uh, everyone really enjoyed this presentation. So to our panelists, thank you again so much for uh, sharing your time with us here and uh, being part of this. Uh, we definitely want to encourage, you know, people to come out to the garden and see Washed Ashore and uh, something that's taken a lot of this plastic debris and made it into some really impactful art but obviously we really want to support the people um, feet on the ground that are out there actively uh, addressing this plastic issue as well so uh, again thank you guys so much for being part of this presentation tonight. Alex I'd be curious if anyone wants to share their um, one of their three action items maybe they'll motivate somebody else. Yeah, definitely. Please uh, put that in the chat, guys. We'd love to hear uh, some of your action items that uh, Karen had asked for earlier in the presentation. Um, I know I did see some people up there talking about, uh, you know, bringing your own takeout, like Christina had mentioned, uh, and things like that. But yeah, please feel free to share uh, your items with us, guys. <laughs> There's a website called uh, PlasticFreeJuly.org, and they have tons and tons of great um, suggestions for ways to avoid single-use plastics. Um, so yeah, we've, uh, uh, we're doing a plastic-free pledge here too at the Botanical Garden, so I'll include that information on that as well in the follow-up email for you guys. It'll take a link directly um, to that, save you guys some steps as well. Um, we've got some uh, action items as well uh, for you guys to check out. So again, that link and that information will be up in the follow-up email that you guys will receive. Uh, looks like we do have people uh, switching, uh, let's see, paper laundry soap. Uh, we've also got switching out the dryer sheets. Um, so we've got some activity down there. Um, the toothpaste tabs and replace the toothpaste tubes. Uh, that's actually one change I made as well. I got the, um, the toothpaste tubes and the wooden toothbrush too. Got uh, people taking their own uh, to-go containers <laughs> and yelling at Chick-fil-A for styrofoam. <laughs> and there are going to be some places that have to make the styrofoam changes for sure. Uh, another bamboo, uh, bamboo toothbrush user. So yeah, it's uh, this is exciting. Again, come out to the 21st, uh, July 21st, uh, and you can see a lot of other things and talk to Christina as well. She'll be doing that free program on site at 9.30 to 9.30 to 10.30. Also, one thing I would add is uh, <clears throat> when you, if you love your re local restaurant, but they give you carry out or take home in plastic, just let them know that you don't, you, you, you dig their food, but you're not so hot on their, their plastic. And uh, that's the kind of feedback they need to hear. Especially if you let them know that you would be willing to pay a quarter or whatever, 50 cents for a, you know, if, if you can't bring in your own container because you're ordering ahead of time that you would be willing to pay the extra, whatever, a few cents to help cover their costs so it's more sustainable and yeah. And then, you know, definitely um, speaking up goes a long way. Um, I do have to, if you guys come out to um, Wednesdays to the garden uh, and Plastic Free July, and again, we've got the different vendors out there, one of them being um, a coffee truck, Bear House Coffee Roasters in the morning. Uh, we actually asked, you know, to, for, to stay in line with our environmental or initiatives. He's actually switched it to compostable uh, cups for his drinks as well, too. So um, definitely always speak up. Uh, it seems like, you know, especially a lot of the small businesses, uh, they want to keep their customers happy um, and they obviously hear you a lot more directly. So um, if you're willing to support them as they make those changes, uh, it'll definitely go a long way. So um, with that, thank you guys. I'm excited to see all the changes people are uh, switching to already in the chat. Um, and again, come out to the garden and uh, check out those links that we'll be sending you because again, there's a lot of great information on how to uh, work and help with these organizations. So um, thank you guys so much. Uh, again, uh, please feel free to reach out with any questions. But other than that, uh, we've got someone not crying anymore. I uh, wanted to read that one aloud. Uh, definitely ended on a hopeful note here. So um, with that, good night, everyone. And thank you again for tuning in. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thanks, Alex.